Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Marcus Blyden, and welcome to Highlight Artists, where we feature a new artist each week. Today on the program, I have the pleasure of introducing to you Bliss, who is a storyteller locally here in the Virgin Islands. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. All right. Uh, well, tell our listening audience a little bit about yourself and how you got into storytelling. Well, my full name is Bliss Bully II. Mm -hmm. um, what happened is I knew someone who was working in the cultural department and they actually reached out to me about spreading our culture to the children of the Virgin Islands. Wow. So they got me in contact and they provided me some stories. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, this is when I was in college, maybe around um, 2015. Okay. And I've been telling stories to our local children since then. Okay, that's interesting. What's the name of the department that you are done? It was a cultural department. The cultural department. Our local, it's connected to, I think, the historical department, somewhere mm -hmm. around there. But um, they have a, you know the old Jarvis school? Mm -hmm, yeah. They're located in the annex. Oh, okay, or they okay. at least were at that time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, the, um, what would you say, because I know storytelling is kind of like a dying art, if you would say. What would you say to someone who is interested or loves reading books, loves history and so forth and would like a young person who would like to get interested in storytelling also, what would you like to say to them? I think it's a great thing to do. Mm -hmm. I think it keeps our culture alive. I think it spreads morals that we can all agree should be spread from one generation to the next. Mm -hmm. I think it also even shares small things like what bush is good, what yeah. fruit to mm -hmm. eat, wow. um, you know, just little things that mm -hmm sometimes we miss from one generation to the next because they're woven into these stories that we no longer tell. Yeah, and that's something that you would, I mean, even you mentioned in the bush and so forth, that's something that you would never really think about before. Exactly. So was there anything or anyone who you looked up to or um, was your inspiration? So first off, um, my grandmother, she bought me maybe six and Nancy's books when I was small. So um, before school, I used to go to her house. She watched me and my brother when we were um, before five. Mm -hmm. So she got me started on the books and the stories. And then um, Mr. Davis Corbina, mm -hmm. he definitely taught me the ins and the outs and how to keep life in the mm -hmm. stories, keep the children engaged. Okay, good, good, good. Well, we're glad that you're here on the program. And I know you have a list of or at least one or two stories to tell us so we'll right now go ahead and have you tell the story thank you very much so stay tuned and for the upcoming story Blue 11, Fine Caribbean Dining at Yacht Haven Grand. With Valentine's Day around the corner, we have everything you'll need to make the day a memorable one for that special someone. You may place your orders online via our website, call us, or come into our store at Barbell Plaza. So today, I'll tell you the story of Zaya and Tig. You see, Zaya and Tig like the same girl. Tig, he was good looking. He was rich. Zaya, he didn't have much to offer. And because of this, Tig didn't feel like Zaya was a threat at all. So, Zaya said, hmm, I need to put a plan together. So every time Tig would go over to Susie's house, 
this is the girl both of them like, Zaya would say, hey, could I come along? And Tig, thinking nothing of it, would say, of course. So now, Susie left down the road, around the corner, and under the Tarmon tree, okay? And they would always go there together. And every time they went, Zaya would speak so well of Tig. So well of Tig that Susie's parents said, wow, Zaya has to be a saint. Who else would big up their friends so much? Man, one Sunday they went there and they raced together. And Tig said, you know, I really wanted to get here first, but Zaya just beat me. Zaya said, I beat you? He said, man, Tig said, one, two, three, go. And the next time I saw Tig, he was here waiting for me so we could walk in together and it wouldn't look so bad. Another Sunday, they went fishing. And after that, they went by Susie's parents' house. Tig said, you know, I did well. And I caught some fish and I feel pretty good about it. Zaya said, you did well? He said, Tig caught five fish this big. And you know how good Tig is? Tig went and he gave me two fish so I don't have to fish for the rest of the week. I could eat. Man, they were loving how Zaya just made Tig look so good. So now, after going over there, month after month, Tig was feeling confident. Tig said, you know, I think today is the day that I'm going to ask Susie's parents if I could marry her. So Zaya said, would you mind if I go over with you? Tig said, no worry. So they went over and Tig spoke to Susie's dad. So Susie's dad said, I understand you want to ask Susie to marry her. I have some questions for you. Say okay. So Susie's dad said, do you have any property? How will you be able to take care of my daughter? So Tig said, yes, I have, I have a small property. Zaya said, small property? That man have land. He have banana, he have cassava, he have cocoa, he have all the crops. Susie's dad said, hmm, okay, okay. I understand you have land, but do you have somewhere for her to sleep? She can't come sleep down the road around the corner and under the tarmon tree with us. You, you, we don't have space for you too. So Tig said, you know, I have, a, I have a small house. You know, it's cozy. We'll be fine there. Zaya says, small property? He said, Tig have nothing short of a mansion, sir. So Susie's father said, hmm, I like how this sound. I really am. He said, okay, I understand that, but what about your savings? I hope you put some money away. Tig says, sir, every time I do a job, I make sure I put some money on the side, you know, so I have a savings. So I said, wait, 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 son, no, no, no. Small savings, you have to understand. Since you are family, I'll tell you this. If you wasn't about to be family, I wouldn't say. Tig owns two banks. He also has some chests. Remember that mansion I told you about? He has some chests hide away in a couple of those rooms. So Susie's father said, wow, okay, okay. Everything's sounding well. I like how that sound. So Tig say, yes, sir. <coughs> you, won't have, <coughs> you won't have much to worry about. Susie's father said, Tig, I see you have a cough. You, you're doing okay, is that a small cold? Zaya said, small cold? We took him to the doctor last week. He has nothing short of COVID. You see me in my hazmat suit? You see my six feet quarantine? No, sir. No, sir. That is COVID. Susie's father said, COVID? COVID? They kicked Tig right out of the house. Next time, Tig saw Susie, Zaya, or the family, Zaya and Susie were married. Okay? Wheel bend, story end. Take your pen and write your name in. Now we have two morals to this story. One is never underestimate anyone. The next moral is take what you have so that you can get what you need, okay? Thank you very much. Exquisite Jewelers presents to you the new Caribbean collection. Handmade designer pieces designed by J. Richardson himself, born and raised here in the Virgin Islands. Now, Exquisite Jewelers has partnered with Alpha Jewelers to now bring you that exclusive shopping experience where you could get this new collection exclusively at Alpha Jewelers. Come and get your new bracelets, earrings, chains, 
bangles. Check out this amazing, lovely collection. All hand design by Jay Richardson himself. So make sure you guys go online or go in the store off of Jewelers down on Main Street. And make sure you guys go and get that time piece that you want today. At Alpha, you, you come, come as strangers and, and you leave as friends. friends. story of Bronanti and the monster. See, as you know, Bronanti loved to hear storytelling. It didn't matter how many villages away the story was being told, Bronanti would go to hear his story. So one day, there was a story being told many villages away and Bronanti decided he would go to hear the story. Now Bronanti knew that his parents wanted him before it got dark, but he went anyway. Now story after story after story was told and the sun went down and down and down but Bernanti did not leave. Now it was dark and it was time for Bernanti to get home. He already knew he was in trouble so he started his way back home. This night no moon was out, no stars were out. Bernanti made his way home. Now you may not remember this but Bernanti he was dead afraid of Jumbi, ghosts and anything else. So, as he made his way home, he decided to sing a little music just to keep anything away. So he sang, na 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 just trying to make some noise to keep any jumbi away, you know? So he running, and he running, trying to get home quickly. But as he banked the corner, he saw this ghostly figure. It had long, long fingernails like bananas. It had long ears like a donkey. It had fiery red eyes and the teeth. The teeth were long like swords. Before you could say, I'm way back here. He take off running down the road and he run and he run and he run and he run and he run. He ran so fast, he left his breath behind him. When he finally catch himself, he see an old man house down the road. He stumble up the old man's stairs and he get on the porch and he knock on the door. Now this is late at night. The old man knock on the door. He says, son, why are you bothering me here at this late night? He said, the stars not even out. They all gone to bed. He said, I'm so sorry, grandpa. It's just as I was walking home from the storytelling, I saw the scariest figure in the road. He said it had long fingernails like bananas. It had long, long ears like donkeys. He said it had eyes bright like fire. And the old man said, wait. It had long teeth like these. Man, as a Nancy see that, he gone, ping, take off down the road again. He running and he running and he running and he running. He passed all the villages. He run right into his village, right into his house and right under his bed. And he's still there today. And if you don't believe me, look under your bed and see if you can't find a spider. Wheel bend, story end. Take your pen and write your an end. Now, listen to the moral of this story. When your parents tell you something, they know why. You don't know what's lurking in the dark around different corners, okay? Listen to your parents' guidance. <laughs>